Okay. I want to talk about something. I do not like when other gun owners try to impose their will, their way of carrying, their methods upon other people. Uh, and in this case, what we're going to talk about holsters. And we're going to talk about a specific holster maker, uh, Alien Gear. So, I was on uh, I was on Facebook today, and I am on the P320, uh, I guess, at user group. Um, so someone today they bought they bought an Alien Gear, and I guess they received it today, and they tried to fit their P320 uh, compact in the holster, and it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't even it would go as far as they get the slide in, but the the trigger guard area was too big to fit in the shell um, so he's you know he, he goes on Facebook and I I don't know why he didn't just call uh, alien gear and tell them what was going on I don't know if he was just kind of confused on how how that you know uh, on some things and we'll talk about that in a minute uh, but here's the thing a customer having an issue with a product, they should always contact the maker. Um, and I would say not just contact, call them. Don't don't have email exchanges because sometimes email can be read wrong. Um, uh, diagnosing an issue via email is is, is it could go on for days and hours. Whereas if you just call, that call could be a five-minute call. Um, as well, you know, this guy was ranting and raving, and there was nothing wrong with the damn shell. He was sent the wrong shell. That is a is a processing issue. Wh whoever packed up his 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 things, they didn't kind of. Maybe they got a new person in there and they don't know the difference between a, uh, a compact and a subcompact shell but uh, I can tell you the difference right now because it, the difference between the two guns is one is smaller than the other and then there's the rounded trigger guard on the on the subcompact and the square trigger guard on the compact so uh, what what's happening is the guy is trying to squeeze a square into a circle a circle area pretty much it's not it's not gonna fit they're two different guns they're the same model they're two different sizes and the trigger guards are two different shapes so in telling him this he kept insisting that it, there was a problem with alien gear and I'm like how is this a, a, a quality control problem um, there's nothing wrong with that shell the only problem is that they sent you the wrong shell and you're sitting here arguing why it won't fit in there it look making yourself look stupid uh, and, and I wasn't the only person that said that there was three or four people that said you know what I think you have the wrong shell you're trying to fit the wrong gun in that shell it would have been easy as hell to get on the phone and tell and tell Alien Gear that so they could, they could send him the proper shell. And a lot of times when they when they make that mistake, they say, "Oh, you can keep that shell. We'll send you another one." So he could that would have been good for him because what he could do is he could actually uh, buy a, a a subcompact frame like like I did, and then he has he has two shells. Excuse me, two shells for for one for each version of the gun, the frame. Oh my gosh, uh, sorry about that. So, I, I don't understand, you know, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't just this guy having a problem. It was a, a bunch of people trying to pile on, trying to create, uh, I guess, uh, bad press for, the, for, uh, for, for Alien Gear. Um, a lot of people are saying, "Why would you know Sig is considered a premium brand gun? Why would you spend so much money buying a Sig and then go and buy a thirty dollar holster? You know that type of shit." 
one because you know I don't understand I don't understand that thought process because in this case we're talking p320 those aren't exactly premium guns I mean people want to say that well if it's a sig it's premium gun you know what sig makes some 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 poly guns they make poly guns the p320 the sp2022 and probably several others are plastic guns how in the hell can you say that I mean do you know how silly it is to say this is a premium polymer gun it's plastic plastic in my opinion means it is no better than any other plastic gun out there the magazine mechanisms like in the slide area yeah but when you start putting when you start making a gun uh, I guess a uh, out of a high percentage of plastic hey it's no longer a premium gun in my opinion so so there's that and two why in the hell would you spend a hundred dollars on a premium holster when a thirty dollar one would work just as well I could understand if you need specific um, a specific build of holster or you need a very rugged holster you need something that's gonna let, let's say you know uh, let's say construction you know and I'm saying this because there was there's another story here from the same Facebook group another another guy had bought an alien gear holster and he worked construction and and the thing is let me let me retell this let me let me start all again there was a guy who bought an alien gear holster and then he he came on Facebook maybe a week and a half two weeks later stating that their you know alien gear products suck because his his holster started unraveling and and we're sitting here like wondering well damn what the hell you been doing with that? Have you been dragging it on the ground, or, you know, behind your truck? Uh, apparently, yeah, he worked construction. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's probably outside of the scope of, uh, I guess, build quality for that particular holster. I, I can look at it. I don't even have to have it in my hand and never seen it before to, to just look at, a, as a, at an, uh, an internet image a picture and outright tell you that particular holster is not going to work if you're carrying and you're working construction it's not you know for, for guns for guns going to be carried like that you want a holster that probably is triple stitched and it's probably made out of leather you don't want anything you don't want a, a hybrid type holster and you, kydex will work um, leather holster work, um, hybrid holsters, no, no. I'm not even going to explain why. I mean, it, it's it's it be it would be stupid and idiotic to even try to explain that. This, you know, stitching is not going to last all that long when you're moving in the manner that construction workers do. Um, you know, doing that all day. Maybe absorbing sweat, flexing those stitches are gonna break, you know, and then and and it goes on and on. So, no, that that's not gonna work. And uh, as soon as he said that, I was like, what the hell? I was like, you sitting there bitching about that, and uh, and, and you're working construction. You didn't mention that. It's almost it was almost like he he purposely left that out until he couldn't leave it out anymore. You know, it just kind of slipped. Well, it didn't slip. That it's like he purposely dodged it or didn't say anything. It was almost like he was trying to do that to uh, to purposely. Excuse me, just a second. I was doing something else. Something popped up. Um, it was almost like he was purposely kind of leaving out that information. And once he said that, the, the conversation died. But this, this is these are the type of arguments that are thrown against Alien Gear products, and I don't understand that. You don't need a quality holster. Everyone, you know, I I have a lot of guns, 
And but you know what? Most gun owner, gun owner, gun owners are gonna say that, right? Um, I have 13, 14 handguns and a rifle. Um, so the idea was that at one, at some point, I'm gonna carry a lot of those. Uh, well, carry those. Not you know, I, I don't have rotations like. I carry this gun on Tuesday, this gun on Wednesday, and and things like that. But uh, I will, I will be eventually carrying those guns, right? So the idea is, if I use alien gear and I use their base and just kind of maybe buy five or six shells, well, right now I have ten, I think. Um, I could just swap out the shells on a particular base. Right. I don't have to. I don't have to have twelve, thirteen individual holsters. I can just swap out the shells for those. That's why I bought them. Um, in my opinion, that's more cost effective. Um, yes, I'm spending money on guns. Um, no, I don't see that as a contradiction. You know, just because I own a, a ton of guns and some, several of those are way the hell up there in price right that doesn't mean that I have to buy an equivalently priced uh, uh, holster just because I have a, a P220 Equinox doesn't mean that I have to have the equivalent of a thousand dollar holster that's not gonna happen it's not I use the analogy of, of computers so and and probably even cars I, I can let's talk about the computers for a second and and this is directly going to relate to what what we just discussed about the guns the, the holsters um, not all of them are going to be created equal if every man if every holster manufacturer or computer manufacturer made their computers the exact same way as their competitors there will be no need for more than one manufacturer. There wouldn't. Why would there be a need? Because they would all be doing the same and meeting the same specifications. So, so, let's say, you know, I have a Dell laptop, right? Well, I, let's say I have an Alien Gear. I have an Alien Gear M17X R3. I, I actually do. Um, that's a desktop replacement type of laptop. It's a gaming laptop, um, so that laptop specialty is games. So you're a Leo. In in your in your your law enforcement vehicle, you have a tough book. Are they the same? Can you game on a tough book? Probably not. Um, tough book isn't designed to to with gaming in mind, but it you can pretty much walk on the damn thing. Um, do I need just because a, a cop's uh, uh, computer is a tough book and it, it's very rugged and you can it, it's going to be difficult to break does that mean that everyone in the world needs a tough book? No. Depends on your needs. You the individual depends on your needs. It's the same with cars. You know what? Uh, Jeeps, you know Jeep has many of their line, their lineup that are you know trail rated. Um, so th they're not your average SUV. They're not your average vehicles, right? They're designed for off-road capability, uh, a high level of off-road capability. Um, so so I have a a Subaru WRX STI. I actually do. That's an off-road vehicle as well, two different levels. Um, just because you know, uh, Subaru used to rally race their cars, and they still do in America, um, in the U.S. I think they have a uh, Road America or something like that. Um, just because they rally doesn't mean that those vehicles are going to be able to, uh, I guess, are equivalent to Jeep products. No. Uh, Jeep products are, they're, you can basically hill climb with a lot of them damn vehicles. 
um, you're not going to be able to do so much with uh, WRX out of the box or any of the Subaru lineup out of the box. Nope. Um, just two different levels of of uh, traversing terrain. So so does that mean that that Subarus suck in that regard? No. Depends on the individual needs. Um, most people like you know if if they're active and they like driving down trails. If they like uh, driving down remote roads, um, maybe for camping purposes or something like that, or maybe maybe ones are you know a ranger, uh, and uh, and he drives his personal vehicle to check things. I, I don't know. Um, I'm just throwing things out there, but um, not everyone wants a Jeep. Not everyone wants a Subaru. It's good to have a choice. So. It's good to have a choice in holsters and in the different types and the different makers as well. You know, you got some. If you take all of one group of holsters, like if you take a, a group of manufacturers who focus on nothing or nearly nothing but Kydex, you're still gonna find that some are better than others. You're still gonna find that some people prefer one over the other. Even though one might be better than the other, they still choose a lesser one for a certain reason. Uh, uh, maker loyalty? I don't know. Um, just the fact that uh, they've never, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to tell you that choice is good. Instead of harping on a particular maker, uh, your per, you know, your perception is they suck and you give a reason why you know it's almost like someone out there is trying to to bring this company down there's nothing wrong with the company really there isn't I mean do as you do with any product that you buy if you have an issue with it you call them and let them know and and it would be a different story if they were dodging calls or they were being nasty to you when you explain what the issue is or maybe they sent you you know in a, in a given time frame they sent you five different replacements because the stitching kept coming loose on every single one of the holsters that they sent you as replacements that those are issues but I'm not seeing that with alien gear I'm seeing someone maybe having an issue with something and the, the they call alien gear and alien gear says oh we're sorry about that here we'll send you another one on our dime and you never hear from these guys again you know give these guys a chance if you were a small business owner you would probably want a chance as well you would not want people beating you up needlessly I could again I can understand if there was some there were actual problems now now every 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 company goes through growing pains and then this is a fairly new company um, but a lot of people are just kind of they're saying that it's cheesy quality and things like that I, again I'm not seeing it with the amount of horses that I have and I'm, I'm not seeing it I don't see a lot of people complaining about that. I see the only people I see complaining about it are those that that they immediately jump jump at, at at alien gear when there's a problem without giving them a chance to fix it. And again, I mean, how how are these guys living? What other products have they brought bought in their life where they're not even giving the manufacturer uh, time enough to kind of resolve the issue or anything like that. What, what type of people are these? What what type of household are they running? What type of uh, uh, people do they associate with if they have these attitudes that if you if you don't get it right the first time you suck? Yeah, yeah, yeah I have a problem with that type of attitude. I do.
but you know I see it all the time and sometimes I wanna that there's some good information on that Facebook group um, but a majority of the time all I hear is people trying to compare dicks that, that's basically all it is you see people slinging pictures all the time kind of saying this is what I got oh oh really here here's mine and you know one person buys a gun and he's just he's just getting into the firearm industry and another guy kind of blasts him well well if that gun sucks here's mine and it's a damn race gun you know that type of shit you know everyone trying to one up each other and not being uh so much as a uh, uh i don't know a uh, role model you know for the, for those new people or you know people who are just who are, who are new to SIGs um, and I, I mean I tell you now uh, the P320 is a nice gun it is um, and there I don't think there's any other gun out there like it that's that modular you know people want to say Glocks are modular too but they're not selling them that way they're not selling them where you could break apart and kind of start swapping frames and stuff like that you can buy frames and swap them in barrels and stuff like that, but uh, you know, for Glocks. But that's not the way they're they're marketing them. You, when the people do that with Glocks, they're doing it through third-party vendors. You don't have to do that with Sig. You don't have to do that with the P320. So so yeah, it's a nice gun. So people buying it, you know, some some people are new to the the firearms, I guess, uh, culture, and they buy those guns. Others or not. When I bought my, P3, my P320, I had already owned a few guns. But again, uh, when I got the P3, P320 in my hands, I was like, whoa, I was like, this is a little bit different. So, you know, some people, when they see new things, even though they've done, you know, they've, they've been a firearms owner for a while, they see new things, they have questions. They go on to the forums and Facebook groups, and then you get you run into these dicks they kinda just start shooting down everything you say you know I, I hate groups like that I do I, I don't got time for that shit um, and, and what's gonna happen is I'm probably gonna just fade away from that that group you know there's other groups I can focus on that I I can get more valuable information from it's all about information to me in order for me to grow as a firearms owner I have to be able to kind of look at what other people are doing and other people are suggesting and you know in order for me to grow myself as a firearms owner um, I can't just do it on my own and that's with everything I do uh, I believe you know I need to be able to kind of you know as I grow into my hobbies I begin to pick and choose you know when I start out, I'm looking for feedback all over the place. But after a while, I begin to understand what is best for me. And I'll pick and choose. You know, like, for instance, uh, a lot of people don't like James Yeager. They can't stand him. A lot of times when I bring him up, when I'm talking to him on forums and such, people, they, it was all, it's almost like they start frothing in the mouth. And I, I don't understand why, because I don't particularly like James Yeager either. But he knows more about guns than I do. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Um, anyone who actually trains, they have a training facility. Um, they have a training company. Um, they have employees that 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 they hire to train. Uh, I guess uh, customers. Yeah, they they obviously they obviously they obviously know something. I'm not gonna pretend I know more than James. I take what I can from him and I ignore all the bullshit so so I'm watching his videos and from for the most part I can tell when he's bullshitting um, you know I mean, look at me you see all this damn gray hair uh, I'm not aging I'm not aged prematurely I'm not 25 I'm 48 so so you know when you when you get to be that age and, I, and I'm not saying that I'm like six that's not saying like I'm 65 and I'm, I'm old and and sage like but at the same time 
I know when someone's bullshitting and when someone's not. I know what I, you know, when I see something I can take from it, I'm going to take it. When I see something that, that I want to leave there, I'm going to leave it there. So, so I watch, I watch all of the, the, uh, the YouTube uh, firearm celebrities, with the exception of the Yankee Marshal. I cannot stand him. Uh, he brings no value. He does he own a training company? Um, has has he law enforcement experience at, at some point in his life? Um, what what is he doing to to further? Uh, I guess the 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 right to bear arms. What is he doing? A lot of the the shit he does is, you know, if 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 someone told me you have you have one choice, whether to like the Yankee Marshal or James Yeager, I'm liking James Yeager because if he has a business that's designed to teach people how to defend themselves, yeah, I know he knows something about defense. Um, I don't know shit about what the Yankee Marshal does or did. A lot of the shit he does, I'm like, just, you know, at one point I was kind of like, my mouth just dropped open, did he just say that shit? And and I say did, because I stopped watching his shit. I will go out of my way to not watch any of his videos. I can't remember the last time I watched one of his videos. Uh, one of the reasons why is, well, there's two reasons. I, I watched two of his videos before I quit. One of them was when he was talking about uh, bad shit about the, the Canic TP9 SA. About the, the gun, that striker fire gun not needing a decocker. I don't care. You either like it or you don't. You buy it or you don't. If you don't like it, fine. If you don't buy it, fine. But don't sit here and tell me, you know, that because I'm buying something you don't like, that's bad everyone has an opinion you know um, so so I sort of agree with the, the you know the, the decarga being a useless feature but I can understand why they put it there because people on that side of the world they have a whole different type of mentality about guns and when you know I, I, the main reason that that decarga is on the gun is so that you don't have to pull the trigger the trigger the, the the clear it well you don't it's so you don't have to pull the trigger before you take it down because in order to take it down you have to rack slide back you rack slide back um, you you do the take you know you squeeze the take down pins down and you pull it up but, but I mean you ha you have to pull the trigger so in, the, in, in lieu of pulling the trigger you decock the gun um, does that cause a safety issue? Um, you know, that, that decocker being there. Theoretically, yeah. But I have yet to see anyone get into trouble or, or say that. I have, I, I've only seen one or two videos where someone said that they dropped a gun and the decocker deactivated the gun. And when they were doing that, they were purposely doing that. Um, I have yet to see anyone say, "Well, you know, I was, I was carrying my gun, and the next time I, you know, and it was in condition one, and the next time I checked it, it was, uh, it was decocked. I have not heard any of that. That gun is in, isn't exactly easy to decock either." Even if you're purposely trying to decock the gun, uh, you have to have you have to put some uh, some pounds behind the pressure. You know when you're pressing down that that decocker, um, it's not gonna just kind of go off when you bump it on anything. I don't think so. Um, I have seen several videos where people kind of hold it upside down and drop it on top of the slide, and they pick it up and they look at the striker and it's deactivated. Um, <clears throat> The only reason people do that is because they 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 heard that it could be done, and you know what? To be honest, if you're training religiously with your gun, like for instance, going to one of those James Jagger camps, um, they teach you 
what to do and they 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 train they try and train you rigorously to where you get that uh that that you get it ingrained in your memory so that when you're pulling the trigger and you don't hear a bang you automatically rack that gun with another round and you're charging that gun and uh you know what decocking if if your gun gets decocked when you're in the middle of a defensive situation that's what you do it is with 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 all features you could end up in a in a very bad situation let's say let's say you have a Glock 19 and you're fighting off a someone trying to attack you and he grabs your gun um, after you've, you know, I guess, let's say he grabs your gun and when he grabs your gun he, he inadvertently and it benefits him when he does this he inadvertently hits the, the magazine release so your magazine drops out, you still got a round in the chamber but that's it your gun is pretty much essentially dead, you have that one round in there but it's, it, after that it's dead so in this case the same thing applies pretty much it does so you know and then the the, the Yankee Marshall had mentioned another uh, what was he he did like a top guns not to buy type thing uh, and the Bursa Thunder 380 was in there talking about cracked frames um, I don't think I've heard of any Bursa Thunder 380s in recent history that had cracking frames. So, so here's the thing, and, and there's a commonality between both of these. I could understand if the Yankee Marshal, if he had a burst of thunder, and he was firing that, and he saw an example of where the frame it cracked, or if he had a friend who did, or he, you know, it, he what he's doing is he's taking someone else's experience probably from you know he had a friend who had a friend who had a friend who had a friend who had a friend you know ten times backward that said that he had a, a bursa frame you know crack and I, I find that hard to believe um, it'd be different if he actually owned one said he owned one said it happened to him but no he didn't say that um, with with the canic he did that long ass review and then two things rubbed me really wrong with that video one he 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 talked all that shit about the gun never even fired it never even touched it didn't didn't touch it before reviewing it so he has no hands on experience with this gun yet he's talking shit about the decocker so does he have to have hands on the gun in order to kinda uh, I guess to develop a decision that the decocker is not gun on the striker fire gun. No, he doesn't. But if he's sitting there talking about how, you know, how it could, how the decocker could be uh, activated inadvertently, yeah, I would say he does have to. If he's talking about that specific gun, yeah, he does. He's talking about the features of the gun and how how easy it would be for that gun to be decocked with that decocker how can you do that and not have even touched the gun you can't again that's like someone ten times backward telling him that that happened to them you know a friend of 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 a friend ten times over so it just you know that's bullshit um, as well, um, the worst thing about that video was that he told he said that every single one of his peer uh, YouTube um, uh, firearms guys that reviewed that gun was sucking the manufacturer's dick. That's what he said. That is bad. That is bad. That that's. That's telling every single person that you may have had interaction with, uh, 
your peers that that you're shady that you can't have an opinion you're that 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 the you know the vendors paying you off to say something that's not true that's what he's saying and he said that for every he I, I, I shit you not he said that that's why I hate the gun that you know I love the gun culture but I hate it at the same time because you see all these guys out here they're pushing these ideas on people their ideas like it's 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 the firearms Bible I can understand why when you have a strong opinion on things but you know there's two types of opinions a subjective opinion and an objective opinion the Yankee Marshall's opinion uh, not objective it's subjective James Yeager's opinions depending on what he's talking about could be the same way but if he's talking about defense because of his knowledge of defense um, he's gonna be more credible than if I said something or said it against you know said something against him because he has that experience he has that experience he has that knowledge um, he has all those other trainers that that he he's hired. Um, he, I'm pretty sure he doesn't hire neophytes. Um, he doesn't hire people and then train them. Um, they already have, you know, like uh, FX Hummel. Um, they they come to him already having uh, an extensive background in shooting and self defense. So uh, so yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, maybe this rant is over. Um, this video is 37 minutes, uh, a lot longer than what I thought it would be. Um, I had to redo it because I looked up. I was in the middle of one, and it wasn't. I don't think it was quite this long. Um, I looked up and saw that the record button hadn't been pushed, so I had to redo it. Um, every single bit of this is gonna stay in the video because I think every bit of it is important um, I'm not gonna do any editing um, so here it is it, it, this is raw footage um, I have not been in a range in a while I've been out of a job since April I just got hired again uh, yesterday uh, with a different company um, I had been with Verizon for 11 and a half years. I had to leave them because I got caught up in that, that, uh, uh, union bullshit. So I'm an IT security consultant by trade. Um, I used to be a security analyst. Um, half of my background is security analyst. Half of it is security consultant. I gave up my job of 11 and a half, well, 10 and a half, 11 years. Um, when they decided to repurpose me to to be a, a copper maintenance person, which meant that I was up on ladders when I was deployed when the people were striking. Um, the cool thing was I was able to save up six ten thousand dollars in ten days. Yeah, I worked that much overtime during the time that I was deployed, um, and banked that and use that to kind of pay the house note and stuff while I was looking for another job. I had no idea it would take this long, but I, to be honest, I was a little bit picky. A little bit picky. So, um, yeah, I am, uh, I will be working again, we'll probably, be, probably within two weeks, uh, doing similar things to what I was doing before, working in the IT security industry. Uh, I will be leading a team, um, of analysts being there for them, mentoring them, learning new things, uh, learning how to correlate uh, the things I'm analyzing, things like that. So uh, that means uh, you know I, I I've slowed down with my training, you know, shooting because I'm trying to I was trying to pinch pennies. So I can once I start working again soon, uh, that'll recommence. I can start uh, looking at other potential gun purchases I you know I have have some ideas on what I want to buy um, maybe a couple of more tri stars maybe a c100 maybe a t120 
um, a P100, maybe an AK-47, um, and I need a safe. I need a big safe. Take, you know, right now I have a small safe, and I, I'm packing all the guns in there. Uh, but I need something for my rifles. Um, yeah, I said I was gonna wind this down four minutes ago. But yeah, so I will be back uh, in the swing of things soon. Um, get my hobbies back on. Um, well, give me a couple of months first because uh, you know uh, I have some bills and stuff to pay that I kind of lingered on on paying uh, while I was uh, looking for work. Uh, so uh, those have to get take care taken care of after that's done. We'll uh, we'll look at the gun situation again. All right.